What's up? This is Space Bar's Scarlet Monastery Guide. Unlike most Scarlet Monastery Cath 1 poles, we're going to be doing a Mograine with our pole. And I'm going to be showing you a very sloppy run that I attempted to salvage. And the reason I chose this is because I figured it would be a lot more helpful to focus on preventing the worst case scenarios that could happen in these types of runs. So you can see my talents here, it's just the usual builds, the only difference I have is I have 4 out of 5 clear casting. As you see, I killed that first mob in the beginning there. That's just to prevent the group from aggroing it and dying. It's a mob that you have to kill before you start your pull. As for items that I bring with me, I try to bring any scroll of protections I can find off the auction house, any food buffs I can get. I will have a priest buff me with stamina before I leave the city. I will bring my rings with stamina on it as much stamina intellect gear you can get. I'm actually using 5 set tier 2 which is going to be very helpful to me. As for slow removal, I always have PvP trinket on with both my ice blocks up. I usually have some uh, reaction potions but not today. Um, instead I have some limited invulnerability pots which I will only use if I have to. Besides that, I will just use some superior healing potions to keep myself alive. I currently have 3,900 health, which is a lot. I I used to do this back at 2,800 health, so this is doable with less health. First thing you want to do is reapply both your shields and then instantly frostbolt rank 1 both of these mobs. It's important that you get each mob because they aren't connected through their aggro range. You have to aggro them individually. Next thing you saw me do is Frost Nova the two packs right at the door. This is to ensure that nothing is going to be right up your ass the whole time. As you run through Scarlet Monastery, you want to avoid aggroing other mobs. You'll see that I go the wrong direction here because it was late and I wasn't paying too much attention. You can still salvage it, just, just run through the mobs and continue up to the door. You normally would have went directly to this door and opened it. I always use a blink there to gain a little bit of distance and avoid just that little bit of extra damage to keep your shields at full before entering this room. Now you have all the mobs on you, they're getting slowed by ice armor you're taking a left side here you're gonna wrap around towards the boss try to nova as many mobs as you can while still tagging the boss your shield should be running low here and you should have a blink up so get ready to take a little bit of a wide turn and blink through to avoid as much damage as you can try to los some of these frost bolts and reapply your shields as soon as possible as you see again i'll take a wide turn here and go for a blink still take a lot of damage I try to reapply my shield at this point. I fail to avoid some of the frost bolts and end up getting slowed. I, I try to eat the slow without having to use one of my slow removals. End up getting slowed a second time. At this point, I know I have to pop one of my slow removals and I decided to opt for an ice block rather than my PVP trinket because it does take a little bit of an extra second to remove the slow using an ice block whereas a PvP trinket does not hinder your speed at all, so I chose to save that. Now I use a Nova here and a Kona Cold back then just to try to create a little bit of distance. I know I don't need my Nova or Kona Cold cooldown anytime soon, so it's safe to go ahead and use it here. I'm running low on mana and shields right now. I'm not in the best position this early in the pull. Note, take note of when I use my blinks. I use them at specific times to avoid as many frostbolt casts going off as possible and to keep the blink cooldown off cooldown for the next part. This corner here is probably the most crucial point in this pull. It's important to have your blink up and to take a very it's important to take a very wide turn here and then use your blink to avoid as much melee damage as possible since the mobs are going to be riding your ass at this point. You'll also notice how I have my uh, mouse ready to click that PvP trinket just in case I get slowed. You really need to be instantaneous with your reaction on the slow here. If you do happen to get slowed at this corner and you're not ready for it, you will die. 
Continuing on, we're just going to run up, hug the wall to create as much distance as possible. We're going to move along to the evade spot where we could either bandage or evocate, and I opt for a bandage here. Mana isn't as important, but you do need some in order to take the initial hit. And we're going to get interrupted here and have to just move on and reapply our shields to max. We're about to do a pretty crucial blink here that's going to avoid a massive amount of frost bolts coming our way since there's a ton of casters back there casting on us. Since we reapplied our shields to full now, once we get out of our block in about 30 seconds from now, we should have both of our shields up again to reapply. At this point, I've already popped my mana ruby. I'm not trying to use any potions, so I am going to set up a one or two tick evocate here before the ice block. I blink there to make sure I avoid any frostbolt casts coming my way. I'm going to put on my frost ward right before blocking. It's also important not to block too early here. You want to make sure all the mobs can get to you before you get out of block. You'll see some mobs coming up at the very last second here. Now everything from this point on is execution. One false step could mean your death. So we've already taken precautions to prevent some worst case scenarios. The boss does a stun which you cannot change direction out of, you can only blink in the direction you're already facing. Therefore, we've positioned our character so that he can blink in a nice free open field, rather than stutter up against this ledge to our left right here. In this particular pull, I opted to go for an invulnerability potion. Due to how taxing this pull has already been, I didn't want to wipe. However, if the pull was a lot cleaner, you could have just opted to use a superior healing potion right as you got out of ice block to prevent a massive sweep of hits that would one-shot you. If you pop a potion somewhere in the middle, it'll give you a little bit of extra life to help prevent the one-shot, and you can then remove yourself from the mob. At the same time as being ready to pop this health potion, obviously the first thing you do out of ice block is frost nova. So you're frost novaing, moving out of the mobs, and instantly potioning the second your health drops low. If you use an invulnerability pod, you obviously don't have to worry about that. As you'll see, there are no global cooldowns going to waste here. The first thing that happens is a frost nova. The next thing that happens is a reapplication of my mana shield to prevent the melee damage we are going to be taking from the boss. We need to prevent our spell backing, and that will do so. We should still have a frost ward up, so we're safe against any frost bolts that get through. Now we just need to make sure we can get into a proper position. It's important that you stay ahead of this line, or somewhere around this line. This is so that the mobs don't head back as you see them doing already. This has to do with my group being a little too comfortable and being out here, but if you were alone, the mobs shouldn't be running past you like this. You'll notice how I specifically change the direction of my character so I'm facing either to the side or to the back. This is because the boss can stun you. He has a small chance to stun you, and if you do get stunned, as we mentioned, you will only be able to blink forwards. So if you are facing the mobs and you get stunned, you're either going to have to take the stun, all the mobs get unslowed and you die, or you blink forward right into all the mobs because you don't have any other direction to face and you'll still die. So as long as you face to the side, you'll be able to blink out and continue your pull and re-slow the mobs before you inevitably die. That line kind of marks whether or not the mobs will go behind you or in front of you, according and adjacent to your position. So if you need to reposition the mobs, you can just go ahead of that line like I did, and then the mobs should go forward when you jump back over to the ledge. You'll notice that I always drop Blizzard in the same exact spot regardless of where the mobs are, and I'm also reapplying my Frost Ward and Mana Shield as they are being taken off through damage. When the mobs start getting low here, they start scattering all over the place. Now we're getting into the final part of the pull. You can just keep blizzarding as long as you're not getting spellbacked. But if you do, you can just jump back and forth between the ledge and start arcane explosioning, trying to just avoid as many mobs as possible since they all should be low enough that they are moving quite slowly at this point. You shouldn't be taking a massive chunk of damage to wipe you out in one hit. I do have a bit of some backup heals going out from a shaman in my group, but as you can see, the 
grouping of the mobs is awful, my blizzard placements are just all over the place in this pool. The way you have to imagine it is you're taking physical damage and you're taking frost damage, so as long as you have your mana shield up for physical and your frost shield up for frost, you'll essentially never get spellbacked. The best way to prevent the mobs from ungrouping is to make sure you always have blizzard on them, but blizzard is only a 4 second duration chill effect, so if you stop casting blizzard enough to put on both of those shields at the same time, they're probably going to get unslowed and ungrouped as you can see in this video. The best way to go about it is to position yourself, blizzard, then reshield while repositioning, then blizzard, then another reshield while repositioning, then blizzard. In this poll I opted to do both shields in between a blizzard and you can see how the mobs lose their chill effect for a second and rush up towards me. Luckily I was extremely precise with my global cooldowns, I was able to slow them just before they rushed me and killed me. Double shielding was a mistake because while I'm repositioning here, I'm not doing anything else, I might as well have thrown on a new shield. You also want to purposely leave some of these casters alive in order to be able to basically have infinite mana as long as these casters are still casting on you. Sure, you bring Mograin up to the top here while he's still alive. It's important that you kill him up top, therefore the, the lady will come out and res him. If you kill him down below the waterfall, it will not be in range and she will not come out. And if you do want the full kill, you're going to have to run all the way in there and kill her rather than have her just come to you. In the, t the downtime that it takes for her to come out to you, I like to use this time with full infinite mana with these casters casting on you to reapply your buffs, remake your rubies, anything you need to do to expend your mana, now would be the time since you're basically going to have infinite while you wait. I kill all the casters because they have no mana. It's probably better to go back down to the ledge to kite Mograine back and forth while you cast some, while you free cast frost bolts at him. Um, now is definitely the time to have your group come in and start looting and get that over with. But theoretically, by the time you're done with this pull, assuming you leave casters till the end, you should have around full health and mana ready to immediately jump into your armory pull. And that's the cath pull. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you enjoyed, I will show you my armory pull. Worst case scenarios. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked it. Peace!